If you've been wondering how to go super viral on TikTok, today is your day because in this video, we're going to break down an exact strategy for how Sam heedy has been able to monetize his audiences consistently on TikTok, getting 2.5 million views, getting a million views, getting 500,000 views for local businesses in boring niches. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. Sam Heedy, take it from here. In this video, I want to break down how we've been able to monetize our audience just by creating viral TikToks. In fact, this past week has been absolutely insane because we've been able to scale past 50,000 plus followers on Instagram and also 200,000 plus followers on TikTok organically without using any paid ads. Video views on TikTok alone, 6.2 million views. Guys, you sent the internet virals for me. <laughs> We broke the internet. Off the charts. Totally off the charts. IG is total accounts reached 5.3 million. And our followers now on IG have gone up to 186,000 followers. From? We were at 17,000 for the past six years. <laughs> oh, six years. Six years. And within one month, we've gone from 17 to 185,000. And yeah. I can see it because the restaurant has been non-stop. So many new customers, a lot of new customers. Everybody that comes in, chef, I watch your TikTok, chef, I look at your IG, I follow you. 11 over a million views combined. You can't buy that. Trust me, you can't buy that. Hi there, if you're new here, my name is Sam, founder of Brand Talk, a seven-figure viral creative business specializing in helping food brands achieve viral success by monetizing the audience. So I'll be sharing three key strategies that we've employed over the last few years that have been really helpful in terms of going viral and also at the same time getting customers coming through. So these were the lessons that I picked up hustling over the last three years, which basically became my golden ticket to my financial freedom in my early 20s. So let's dive in. If you are a creator or a business owner, you probably have heard people say, give value first. Now, everyone is harping on about value, value, value. But what I want to share with you today is this boxing analogy that I learned from my mentor that has completely changed the way that I think about value and monetization. Have you ever seen a fighter come in the ring land a clean punch and immediately win the match? Obviously, there might be instances where that would happen, but Realistically, that's almost impossible. So when it comes to monetizing your audience, it's no different. Think of every piece of valuable content that you create as a jab, and the boxer will find the right moment to finally deliver the right hook. So here's the secret. Before you attempt to even deliver the right hook, you've got to establish your presence, you know, by delivering consistent jabs in order for your audience to trust you. Here's an example of our content partner and how we've executed this perfectly. This is our content partner, Cochina. We started back in April 2022 from literally zero followers. And now we have grown to over 200,000 plus followers with over 300 pieces of content posted. The question is, when and how did we actually monetize our audience? It was only after posting 60 plus pieces of content within the first two, three months before we saw a significant surge in revenue. So here's the deal. We only started gaining that trust after putting out more than 60 plus pieces of content. What I've learned was you got to give a lot more before you start asking for anything from your audience. So I would say it's kind of like a 60 to one ratio. Create 60 pieces of content directly targeting your audience, and then you can think about asking for something from them. If you're like me, you probably have struggled with your niche. You probably have heard, you know, from gurus and people saying, your niche develops over time, the riches are in the niches. Yes, that's true, but what the hell does that even actually mean? So let me share with you this framework that I've used in my business. I call it the MISS framework. So the first thing is, how would you monetize your audience? So one of the best things that I've done was writing down my goals when it comes to first scaling my business. You know, most creators and business owners, what they'll try to do is grow their follower base and then decide how to monetize it. But what if I told you, you're far likely to make much more money if you go down this path. Create a plan first before actually creating your content because you have to know what are you actually selling? What is the offer? All right, so that leads to my next point, which is interest. What are you most passionate about? What keeps you working till late at night? And what can you be the best in the world at? One of the things that I really like when it comes to creating content is you can actually extract your unfair advantages and portray them in your videos. And what you want to do is when you think about content, think about this kind of content that only is unique to your own circumstances. So let's just say you've been working as a chef for the last 20, 30 years. Think about, look, this is something that I've done and nobody else could replicate. Thinking about this and writing it down before you actually start creating a piece of content, 
that's actually going to help you heaps when it comes to getting your customers because the people who are watching your videos would feel like oh my god this guy's actually talking to me all right moving on to the next point can you actually scale it so could you build a creative team around your brand to ensure that the videos get out on a consistent basis a mistake a lot of business owners make is that they would start creating content and then in the next three or four months, you don't see any sort of results and they just quit. So I've met hundreds of business owners over the last few years. And one of the things that really stood out for me, you know, when it comes to the successful business owners versus the business owners that would fail, the business owners that are highly successful when it comes to the content, they are willing to test and test and test and they're willing to invest in their content strategy. Whereas most people would like to see results within the first week of posting content. But look, content is a long-term game and it always should be scalable no matter what niche you are in. So lastly, strategy. How is your strategy different? So one of my favorite quotes from Sun Tzu is he said, he will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. To illustrate this point, let me take you on a little journey back to 2019 when I first started out when it comes to working with restaurants on the branding and logo. So it wasn't an instant quote unquote aha moment, but my niche developed over time. And I realized, you know, I'm actually pretty good at this stuff. Let's rewind the time when ChatGPT wasn't even a thing. So I actually rang my mentor one day because he was asking me about his content ideas. So I was like, this is what you should do. This is what I think would be good. So. He told me, look, Sam, I think you've got this unique creative talent. Use it to your advantage. And that was the day that I had to choose between sticking with my logo design stuff or should I combine my skills into a whole new content space? So guess what? Obviously, I went for the latter and fast forward three years and here I am with a bunch of successful businesses that we've helped. But let me be real. It wasn't some overnight success for all of us. So it took me a good three years of learning, experimenting and figuring things out until I could confidently say, I know my stuff works when it comes to the food and beverage space, like the niche, I want to control that domain. Now, if you're stuck in the maze of figuring out your niche, don't worry about it, because I've got a whole framework laid out for you down in the descriptions box below. It's like a secret code to hit your audience. This is something that we've used in our business. So if you want, feel free to check it out in the descriptions box below. All right, so the last lesson I picked up when it comes to working and monetizing my content, is the movie satisfaction effect. So you know that feeling when you watch a like a trailer and you just sense that the movie is just gonna be really good and then you'll actually pay money in the cinema to watch it. So when it comes to creating a video, you might think that the content itself is what matters most, but that's not entirely true because the hook or the first five, 10 seconds of the video that is the most important part because if you can't capture the attention within the first five to 10 seconds, you are not giving your audience a reason to watch your videos. So there's a reason why big companies and blockbusters invest millions of dollars when it comes to creating the perfect trailer. Because if you can't capture your audience's attention right off the cuff, then you will not be able to entice them to buy anything from you or even to watch the entirety of the video. All right, so to give you a little bit of context when it comes to this, I was working with a couple of restaurants and all the guys were telling me, look, Sam, you know, you can't have your videos be too long. Um, you know, it, it, people won't watch your videos and stuff like that. But do you know what? I didn't listen to any of them. And I started doing my own way, experimenting my own way. One thing that I've learned is you got to experiment and test. All right, so to achieve that, I'll caveat it with, look, you have to sprinkle in some editing finesse into your videos because no one else is going to watch your video if you're not putting in the effort to actually grab the attention in the next five to 10 seconds. And this is what we do here at Brand Talk when it comes to working with our content partners. And this was exactly how we've grown the business to over 20 to 30 percent in revenue. So the process has always been get good with your content and then get smart, which is how I've built an entire creative team around me. I'll probably share that in another video. So to summarize, always ask what's the takeaway for your audience? And is this something that resonates with my audience? How can I entertain them? This simple but important questions has really helped me heaps in terms of growing my creative business and also helping so many different businesses when it comes to monetizing their content. So in this video, we talked about the three ways we manage to monetize our audience organically. All right, so in the next video, I will share more about the nitty gritty stuff that goes on when it comes to making viral videos, because that's what we do for a living. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe for more and I'll talk to you soon.